Oh my gosh. Hi. I didn't know that you were here. Just kidding. Of course, I knew that you were here to join me for today's sew along, which is for my new Nomi patterns, which is ME 2015, which is featured right here. Y'all, let's go ahead and get into it because I am so excited to be talking to you and then sewing this pattern along with you. So first, let's jump into what is inside the envelope, okay? So this is a two-piece pattern. We are featuring a bustier that is a crop top length, right? And then it also has this really beautiful skirt. You're not going to be able to see my skirt in this video, um, namely because there's some things on my floor that every sewist probably aligns with, but that I would like to make pretend is not on my floor. I mean, I'm sure you get me. I digress, but we're going to be sewing along this bustier. The bustier does feature underwiring under each, each of these cups, excuse me, and then there are actual boning we've got boning y'all because when i wanted to do this design i was like listen the girlies need support and by girlies i mean me i mean like i definitely want to make sure that my girls are supported but more importantly i want to make sure that my fellow plus size or big chest friends are definitely included in this here pattern. So you will definitely need some underwire. You will also need some plastic boning. Now the boning that I use, I just simply got from Joann's. It comes in a really big piece, like you don't need all of it, but I also made plans to make a lot of bustiers because I obviously had to sew one up for the covers of these beautiful patterns. But then I also had to, of course, make one for this here sew along. And then I've got quite a few hacks that are planned. So listen, we are making it like a bustier spring okay and we might even just take it into fall summer winter all of it right because you can style the bustier in so many different ways same thing with the skirt the skirt you can make it in either a nice woven on the cover i do have it featured in a lightweight denim here as well as a satin here and for this sew along i decided to do it in a ponty knit for those that know me know I absolutely love Ponte. I think that it is such a versatile fabric to sew with. And so this is actually a Ponte knit. I'm so sorry that you guys won't be able to see this until the end when I do like, I don't know, some photos or some video or something like that. But either way, I'm very, very excited about this collection because it is giving versatility to plus size as well as big breast women or people who are excited to make the patterns, right? For so long, we have not had a bustier that was made for us and no mas, friends, no mas. So let's actually go over the sizing that this pattern includes, okay? Because I do think that a lot of people think that because they are in a standard size that they cannot fit this pattern. So let's take a look at the actual sizes, okay? So we start off with a 16 lemons, which is a bust of 38 a waist of 31 and a hip of 40. So we're starting out pretty small, in my opinion anyway, right? And then we go up to a bust that is a, um, the bust that is a 60, a waist that is 54 and a half inches in a hip that is 62. Now for size reference, my bust is, well, we actually vary. I don't want to misrepresent myself on Beyonce's internet here today, but my bust right now is like a 44, 46, and my waist is about a 46, and then my hips are about a 59 right now. So I easily fit into this and did not have to make very many adjustments at all. Now, typically I do do a full booty adjustment on most of my pants as well as my skirt patterns. I did not do that for this here pattern. I felt like there was more than enough space for me to go ahead and... Um, uh, leave the pattern as is. Now, I will say that we are following the pattern instructions. This tutorial, or rather this sew along, is not a learn to sew. If you were someone who was like, hey girl, I actually need how to need to learn how to sew, I highly recommend hitting up Mimi and Norris's Sew It Academy, where you can learn all of the basic skills that you will need in order to sew any pattern, honestly. This here sew along is we're going over the instructions, as well as there will be some very fun tips and tricks added in by me, looking just like this throughout the the um, sew along. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. Today's pattern sew along is for the Nomi ME 2015. This is featuring a bustier top that has the optional ties as well as a faux wrap skirt. 
making sure that you check out the back for the different types of notions as well as additional requirements that we need for this pattern. So for this pattern, we are going to be using a an interfacing. So it's going to be a, a fusible interfacing. We'll also be needing um, one seven inch zipper as well as an invisible zipper. So make sure that you have those things available so that we can go ahead and get started with today's sew along. The first thing that we're gonna do is hop into what pattern pieces that we need. And I promise y'all, we don't need much. Okay, so the first pattern pieces that we're gonna go over are the ones that you need for the top. So you need one C. I'm using um, a C cup for my personal bustier. So we're gonna cut out this piece. We need two C as well, and make sure that you're cutting out the matching um, the matching cup sizes because you don't want to have like one D, one double D, and mess yourself up that way. Okay, so make sure that all of your bra pieces match. We have three C here, and so these are all of the bra pieces for the actual bustier bodice piece. We need four as well five which is going to be the side front six which is the back piece and this is the center back and this is where we're going to be putting in our zipper and then we also need of course seven which is the side back okay so my favorite thing about this bustier is that it really does not require very much fabric at all i'm going to be using this one yard cut of fabric that's from ruby star society um, I only have one yard of it because I believe that it was gifted to me and it's perfect for this project because you don't need a lot of fabric. Now for this project, every single piece of your bustier, you need your main fabric, you also need your lining as well as your interfacing. So keep that in mind as you're cutting. If you are someone who likes to be more efficient with your time, absolutely line up all three of those pieces so that you only have to do one cut, okay? Um, for the cups, if you're choosing to use a foam interfacing the way that I am, you will, um, I'll show how I draw it onto the actual foam and then cut it. But yes, absolutely. Okay, so before we get into actually cutting out from my foam, I want to show you that you have to cut your notches. Otherwise you can be messing this up completely. I have this little notch cutter that I use and this is super important, right? So just go ahead, line it up, punch it out. And this is really helpful because sometimes your pattern pieces begin to look like, if you're like me, they do. And you're like over here trying to play Jenga with them. So just go ahead and make sure that you are um, marking your notches and whatever way works for you. Sometimes I will actually just go ahead and use um I'll just use some clips but when you're piecing together this bustier sometimes things can look alike and you just don't want that to happen so just make sure that you are cutting your notches because this is going to go together so easily just like a puzzle piece okay so cut your notches friends boom now if you plan to use the foam then you're gonna wanna trace your pattern pieces on here. But make sure that as you're tracing, you have one piece that is facing up and then the other piece that's facing down. This is gonna be really important because you need to make sure that they are mirror image or when you cut them out, they will be wrong. Again, I went ahead and I transferred my notches to each one of these so that I can make sure that I line them up properly with the piece that they are gonna be fused to. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut these out and then this entire pattern has been cut out. Our first quick tip, listen, I know that putting together a bustier for the first time can be a little intimidating. Trust me, as I was sewing this, I was definitely pulling my hair out. Why? Because the very first bustier that I ever sewed together was this one. It was this pattern. I'd never made one before. So I was going through it for the first time and it was really frustrating. So as you're navigating this pattern, I just want to remind you to one, take things slow. If this is your first time making a bustier, just simply follow the directions. The rest will come. If you're like, hey girl, wh what do I do if I need to reach out if I have a question? Definitely just tag me in the comment section below. You can tag at 
Aronica B. Cole Co. and I will receive the notification and I will come in and lend as much support as I can. But definitely take it slow. Because you're doing things like putting cups into a, a bridge, you're going to have to take it easy and really begin to ease things in very slowly. Think about how we're easing like sleeves into arm seats, right? So it's going to be something similar to that. Also, make sure that you're breathing. It can be frustrating, okay? Have your seam ripper handy and remember that seam ripper does not equal failure. It's just a little helpful tool, okay? I'll see you on the next tip. So before we go any further, let's talk about some of these additional notions that we need starting with this featherweight boning. This can be bought from Joann's. This has an outer um, fabric that's inside of here. We're gonna be taking that off and we're gonna be working with just this plastic inside. So hot tip, you wanna make sure that any time that you are putting the boning in, that as you cut it, you round the edges. So when you round them, you're just simply taking your scissors and literally just rounding that edge. This is going to make a huge difference because if it is not rounded, it's gonna stab you and it doesn't feel good. Ask me how I know, okay? So that's the first thing. The second thing I wanna talk about is the underwire that you're going to be finding. Now this is the underwire for a regular bra. If you notice here, when you line it up, the inside is lower than the outside. The underwire that we need for this here project is going to be the same underwire that you need in essence for a strapless bra. So as you can see here, these underwire sides, they meet. So that's important to note, okay? So you do not want the underwire that has a lower side and a higher side. For where to source these things, my resource is um, Nikki Griffith, who um, is like my favorite bra person. She's the one who helped me to find them. Definitely hit her up for where to locate these. Um, and I will also do some research so that I can drop some sources inside of the, the uh, caption area of this sew along video as well. So just make sure that you've got the ones that are even, not the ones where there is a difference in height, okay? Now let's get ready to sew. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and make sure that all of our, um, our interfacing has been bonded to your um, main fabrics. Follow the instructions for whatever interfacing you ended up going with and go ahead and make sure that those get attached and then we'll head over to the sewing machine. So let's take a look at how we're going to construct this bustier. Starting with the centerpiece, this is going to be exactly the same process that we go through for the main fabric in addition to the lining fabric. So starting with this main front piece, we're going to first attach that to either of these side pieces that will in essence create this bust area, okay? So I'm going to only be showing one side on here so that way you know exactly uh, how to repeat on the other side. So we've got these first two pieces that are going together first. Then we have this side piece here that is going to go together. And then we'll be adding in our back piece or rather our, our main back piece. And this is going to be where the zipper gets installed. We're going to put this together one side, then we're going to repeat it on the other side. Then we're going to repeat the entire thing with the lining pieces, and then we'll be back. Okay, so now that this bodice is basically constructed, I went ahead and I pressed my seams towards the middle of the bodice, right? So everything is going towards the middle. And so we're gonna top stitch these stitches down here. We're gonna do the exact same thing um, for the lining piece, but the lining is actually going to be what holds our boning. So let's go ahead and we're just gonna top stitch all of this down so that it creates a faux boning look on the outside. And we're actually gonna put that boning on the lining. So we'll be back to do that, okay? Okay, so now it's time for us to begin to put our boning in. As you can see, when we went ahead and made our casings here. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is grab your boning and just very loosely measure, like I like to line mine up from the top and then I will just trim it down so that it's about a half of an inch shorter or to a full inch shorter than um, what my casing is asking for. 
And because the casing or the boning is made with this featherweight, AKA plastic, you can just simply trim it down like that, pull it out of the already existing casing there, and you can iron it. I do press mine, but I press mine after I put it inside. And you just wanna make sure that you're lining it up so that it, there is enough space for your seam allowance. Now we went ahead and we already rounded this edge before, but we're just gonna make sure that we round it out again on the bottom side. And you can use, I wouldn't recommend using your 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 like favorite fabric shears for this. Definitely use a, um, a scissor that it's okay if it's used on plastic, okay? And so you want that tip to be nice and curved and I'm hoping that you can see just how curved that is. And that is purely for comfort, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and do that with each of these and then we're just gonna slide them in. They just simply slide into the bodice just like this and they go right in there, okay? And then again, after everything is inside, at that point in time, you can press it or you can press it before you go ahead and um, before you pull it out of the existing casing. So we're going to go ahead and do that for each one of these casings that we've already created. Okay, so now it's time for us to begin the actual construction. So we've got our main side. And then as you can see, we've got our lining piece that has our... Um, boning inside of it okay so we're going to put our right sides together and if you care to clip pin this is the time to do it so you're just going to go ahead and line that up but before we make this official we're going to go ahead and add in our zipper okay so again we're using a separating zipper i'm using this is what the 10 inch would be so i'm going to take a look and see what fits best um because I just want to make sure it looks good, y'all. So this is where the 10 inch would be. And I feel like that's a little too long. So I am going to go ahead and use a 7 inch zipper. So this is what the 7 inch zipper looks like. And honestly, I kind of feel like I wish I... I think I'm going to go with the 10 inch. Okay, so we're going with this 10 inch zipper. We're committed to it now. Boom. I feel good about that. Why? Because you can always add, but you can't ever subtract, right? I mean, you can always subtract, but you can't add when it comes time for zippers. So, um, as we put this together, you're going to be putting this inside so that the zipper is actually enclosed. So you're going to be making a little sandwich here, okay? So that that way, and you're going to make sure that your right sides of the zipper are together. So you want to make sure that you line this up from the bottom and go ahead and clip this in place, okay? So now this zipper is slightly long, but that's okay. We're just gonna be measuring from the bottom and it'll line up perfectly. Someone would have told me that I was going to become like a pattern designer of some of the dopest clothes in the world. I would have thought that you were lying. But I'm really excited that this bustier is out. Um, I've actually never worn a bustier before prior to kind of designing my own. So like this was brand new for me. Like in wearing and styling, all of that. Okay. So again, as we put in our zipper, you want to make sure that the right side is facing the, um, the main fabric. So that way when we flip it out, it lines up perfectly with the um, other side. And again, we're lining it up based off of this bottom area, okay? And so once we get this clipped, we're going to go ahead and sew. Make sure that you are prepared to break out your zipper foot as you are sewing your lining to the main piece, okay? And I'm just gonna be clipping like the top areas together so that they stay together enough but give me enough wiggle room if I need it. So we're gonna go ahead and sew all of the outer area together. We're sewing everything 
but this cup area. We're going to uh, flip this out and stay stitch this, but I'll be back before we do that. Okay, so we have gone ahead and installed our zipper, as you can see here. And so again, I did go with a 10 inch zipper so that it would be all the way down and all the way up. And boom, perfect, okay? And so I did do a top stitch around here and I did go ahead and stay stitch my cup area as well. So now it's time for us to go ahead and construct the cups together. Okay, so hot tip two. Once you've gone ahead and put together your actual base piece, which is this area here, before you add in the cups, go ahead and put it on to see how it fits. You want to make sure that as you put in your zipper, which is in the back, you can zipper it up and it feels comfortable. There's no point in making an uncomfortable garment because you're not going to be able to wear it for longer. And listen, friends, I want you to be able to wear this garment all the time, okay? So definitely make sure that you are sizing it on, putting it on, seeing how it feels, make sure that it fits comfortable, okay? One thing about me, everything that you make of mine is going to be comfy, all right? So that is hot tip number two. So just like we did with the rest of the bodice, we're gonna go ahead and show you how to construct this. So again, you're gonna wanna make sure that your pieces are set up properly. If, you're, if you did not go ahead and use your, um, your notch, uh, cutter or cut the notches out it could be a little hard for you in this area but basically we're just going to take and this is the front these two pieces are the sides and so we're going to go ahead and it actually goes in upside down kind of like this okay so we're going to take our two notches and line it up with our piece that has the other two notches so these two are going to go together and then they're going to go with this cup so we're going to go ahead and piece that together both our main pieces that have our interfacing attached in addition to our lining pieces. Okay, so hot tip number three. This here is going to be your best friend whenever you're doing anything that requires the cups or you're sewing on curves and you wanna maintain that curve. This is just a tailor's ham. I made this by myself. Uh, you can purchase them, but you can also DIY it just for maybe about $5. I got all my materials from Michael's. It was super easy and super fast to make. So definitely make sure that you get this. This is going to help you get the curve of the cup that you want. And it's going to really help you to um, mold those cups in together. Okay. So this thing, very, very useful. All right. Okay. So now that our cups are done, we're going to want to iron them. I'm going to be using this Taylor's ham that I made. Um, to go ahead and shape the cups because um, yes you can use a regular ironing board but because you want the cups to hold on to the shape of the um, like the round shape of the breasts you're going to want to make sure that you put it on to this tailor's ham and just press away just like press your life away okay and this is going to help to give it the shape, especially because we've got um, we've got this foam in here. And so as you can see here, like the shape of the cups is drastically different just because of the ironing. So let's go ahead and press this other one. Um, so that way we can have the nice rounded effect for both of these cups. Um, and when you're pressing this out, this is going to, you know, really just give you that nice finished look. Okay. Now you can either buy one of these Taylor hams or you can DIY it like I did. Super easy project to do. Okay. And this is like coming together beautifully. So boom, now both of these cups are looking very cupalicious, okay? So just as a, as a note, the side that has this like smaller amount right here, this is gonna be on the inside of the bust, okay? So next we're gonna go ahead and attach our cups to our bustier. Okay, so our bustier is just about finished. We've got our cups in. And as you can see, 
this area is completely unfinished so what we're going to do is go ahead and add some bias tape in here so that we can finish this and make it look nice while also creating the channel that we need in order to add in our underwire so we're going to go ahead and do that first all right so now that you've gotten your cups in what I want you to do is go ahead and try it on again because depending upon your breast shape structure I have breastfed for four years so you know we we've lost some collagen up here but definitely go ahead and try it on okay and after you tried it on with the cups in make your adjustments do not feel like because you have to make adjustments that you did something wrong or there's something wrong with your body there absolutely is not remember that patterns are based off of standard sizing not your sizing it's up to you to put your own personal spin on this and really make it yours so try that bustier on if you have to do some pinching go ahead the best thing to do is have someone with you to go ahead and pinch out anything that needs to be pinched out so that way you can go ahead and make those stitches so that it fits just you right now full disclosure i have to customize this based off of every single material that i use some of you may have seen my crocodile bustier I definitely had to try that on and adjust the fit after I made it simply because the materials were different than this here cotton that I'm using for this one. So do not, do not, do not, do not fret about having to make those adjustments. Just make it your own. Everything will work out, okay? Okay, so now our bustier is completed. We went ahead and added in the channeling here. Oops. And then we added the underwire so you can see that that can't be bent. And this is what it looks like. So now your booster is ready to be worn. Definitely try this on for fit to make sure everything feels perfect. If not, then go ahead and make whatever necessary adjustments that you need to make in order for you to rock the hell out of it. Now let's move on to our skirt. All right, so now it's time for us to go ahead and jump on into making the skirt. I'm not going to lie, the skirt is one of my favorite things because it's so versatile. So again, on this cover, I went ahead and I used the satin to make this version. And then I used a lightweight denim to make this version. But one of the other recommended fabrics on here is a ponte knit. So we're going to go ahead and be using a ponte knit for this version of the skirt. Just so that we can see the way that the different fabrics affect how it is that we go about constructing this garment. The skirt has a total of four pieces that we're putting together. There are two pieces for each of the fronts. We have two pieces here just to make sure that we don't show a little too much thigh action there. And then we've got our waistband as well as the back pieces. Each of the front pieces is darted as well as the back piece. So that's going to be where we start with first. It's extremely important to make sure that you go ahead and transfer your notches to from the pattern piece to your skirt piece to make sure that we are lining things up right. So let's take a look at what that's going to look like first. So here we have our back piece. And pardon the um, wrinkles, my cats could not contain themselves away from uh, them keeping them their little paws off of my pattern pieces. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is make sure that you find your proper sizing where the dart is supposed to be. And then go ahead and either trace it with a, um, a tracer to go ahead and transfer those markings. You can use, um, I like to use the heat proof pens to go ahead and make my markings but because this fabric is a little bit darker we're going to do something different so for this i'm going to go ahead and use one of these little rollers now because i'm in between sizes i'm going to go ahead and make my markings for the 3032 which is this line right here and so again i'm just going to go ahead and really um i don't want to say jam it in but uh definitely we're rolling hard okay I like to go over mine just a couple of times just to make sure. Oop, and that was the wrong one. So again, also, it might be easier for you to come up from where the apex of the dart is to make sure that you are marking it correctly. Now, you're gonna wanna make sure that you take note of where your dart area is. And I can see where my dart is on here, but I am gonna go ahead and make that a little bit darker. But it's extremely important that you mark your darts the right area. And also, as you're constructing the skirt, your dart area, if you have to take it in for your waist, um, this is going to be the best place to do it, is to just increase your darts. So let's go ahead and grab one of my um, erasable pens so that we can go ahead and just make this mark a little darker. One of the things that I learned about darts is that it's a lot easier to have your darts completely marked. Um, 
for sewing because it just makes it that much more easy to make sure that your dart is accurate. Um, so there we go. We have our dart marked on this side. So now we're going to flip it over and do the same dart marking on the other side. I'm gonna okay, so now that we have added all of the darts, we've got the darts in the back. These darts look absolutely beautiful. Very excited about them. The next step is we're going to move to the front only pieces. We're going to be going ahead to add our hem to these front pieces right here. So we're going to be hemming all along here. Then we're going to take our other front piece as well. And we're going to be hemming all along here. And as you can see here, we went ahead and cut this a little bit differently. So this marks our fold line over. And we're just going to fold that over and just do a nice little hem on both of those pieces next. Okay, so let's go ahead and head to our machines and do that part. We'll be back when that piece has been hemmed. Okay, so name something better than when you have the perfect matching fabric and thread because baby, it looks amazing. All right, so now that we've gotten our front hem, our front pieces hemmed, we're going to go ahead and put one piece on top of the other. Now this piece that has like this super deep swoop, that is going to be underneath our skirt, okay? Now one of the things that you should have marked is the midline of your skirt and we're going to be lining up both of our front skirt pieces so that that midline area is perfect, okay? So we have this piece down on the bottom. I'm gonna go ahead and line up my hip pieces together. So as you can see here, we, we have these, um, our darts that are gonna be on top of each other. And this is how it's gonna be, y'all. It looks so beautiful. We're going to go ahead and do a basting stitch on top of here before we go ahead and attach our skirt back piece to it, okay? So I am going ahead and clipping these pieces together so that way when it comes time for me to baste it, it will not move, hopefully. But baby, this skirt is coming together and it is looking so cute, okay? So we're going to go ahead and do a basting stitch across this top area and then we're going to go ahead and add the back piece to it. And y'all, we are almost finished with this skirt already. This skirt is super fast, super easy. We're going to attach this back piece, our right sides together, just like this. And our skirt will basically be constructed. We are not going to be sewing it up all the way on this here side because this is where we're going to put our invisible zipper in. Yes, even with the ponte knit, I am gonna be adding an invisible zipper, namely just so that um, we can see how it's constructed in its fullness. However, if you are using a ponte knit and you're like, um, I can slide this up over my hips and my booty without a problem, by all means, make your band, make it work for you. However, if you are sewing this together and you're using a woven fabric that has no stretch, we are gonna go ahead and put that zipper install right here. It's going to be perfect. I will be using an invisible zipper foot to make that easier. And I am um, using my sewing machine to construct this just so that you can see that you do not need a serger in order to make this happen. However, um, if you are using a ponte knit or you're using a scuba where you absolutely can use your serger, by all means whip that serger out and put this baby together the best way that you see fit. All right, friends, so we're gonna go ahead and do this basting stitch across the top and add our back pieces to our back piece to our front pieces and then we'll be back. All right, so hot tip. So if you have a waist to hip ratio that is greater than 10 inches, you might have to increase your dart size and it's okay, all right? So after you've gone ahead and constructed your skirt, definitely slide it on to see how it fits before you add in your zipper. If you need to take it in, go ahead and use this time to take it in. Why? Because you wanna make sure that the center marking of your skirt is still the center marking. Why? Because as the wrap wraps over it, you don't wanna be showing off the sun, the moon, and the skies, right? You wanna make sure that you're covered up appropriately how you wanna be, and that your, your slit is in the right area. So definitely make sure that you're trying your skirt on at this point in time before you add in that zipper, okay friends? friends now it's time for us to go ahead and prep this waistband. Now our waistband does call for interfacing. So we're going to go ahead and grab 
are interfacing and the first thing that we're going to do is install the interfacing to this um, waistband, okay? Now, if you're using a thicker fabric that is, say, um, maybe like a wool or something along those lines, you may or may not want to use interfacing because it's so thick. But if you're definitely using one of the fabrics that are on this cover, which is the satin as well as the lighter weight denim, please make sure that you're using the interfacing so that your waistband does not get stretched out, okay? So go ahead and grab your interfacing and apply your interfacing per the manufacturer guidelines to your waistband, okay? Okay, so let's get into how it is that we're gonna go about installing our zipper. For some people, this might be new. Um, for others, this might be review. So ultimately, we want our zipper to be faced like this out. So you wanna make sure that you're doing your right sides together. Now, I pushed my uh, zipper all the way up so that when I zipper it, it reaches the top of my uh, garment. So we're doing it like this. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and clip that in here. The first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and install this zipper first. And then after I've done the install, then I will flip it around and install it on the other side. I will be using a specialty foot for this. I'm using the Bernina um, 12C, which is a, oh, I'm sorry. No, I'm using the Bernina 35, which is a, this is a an invisible zipper foot. So it's special for, of course, all of the zipper installs that I will be doing. Uh, if your machine comes with a zipper foot, an invisible zipper foot, I highly recommend using that. So let's go ahead and pop this in so that we can see what that looks like. Now also about these zipper foot, the invisible zipper foots, each of them has like these specialty grooves so that it makes it easier for you to stitch close to the actual zipper. You wanna get as close to the zipper as you possibly can with your, your invisible zipper foot. And if you're using a regular zipper foot, then just make sure that you're moving your needle placement over so that it can get as close to this zipper as possible, okay? Okay, so what I want you to see is how close this is, right? So I put this in the second groove because we're on the left-hand side, but when we switch to doing it on the right-hand side, it'll be on this other groove, okay? So again, we're we're trying to stitch as close to this zipper as we possibly can. Okay, and so now our skirt is completed. We've got our waistband in, our invisible zipper is in. Again, the only thing that you should really be able to see with your invisible zipper is this here actual zipper. Like that's it, the, uh, the little handle thing for your zipper is all you should be able to see. Yeah, my zipper is in here so tight. But again, I did this contrasting zipper because my aesthetic aligns with the contrasting zipper. If you're like, I want it to match, by all means, make it match, okay? And then I did go ahead and already add my hem to the garment. Now that's all left to do is press it and show you all the finished product. So let me go ahead and get that done. All right, friends, so we've reached the conclusion of this so long. First of all, I wanna thank you so much for going on this journey with me. Thank you for your support and purchasing my patterns because I make these for you. One of the things that I frequently talk about is how in designing for Nomi patterns, I've created a capsule wardrobe, meaning that everything can be mixed and matched together. So the pants from ME 2005 can absolutely be worn with this bustier. The top from ME 2005, definitely rock it with this here skirt, okay? Mix it and match these patterns up as you see fit. Make sure that you're following me for all of my socials. I can be found at Aronica B. Cole on TikTok, I can be found at Aronica B. Cole and Co. on here YouTube, as well as Needle and the Bell on Instagram. So make sure that you're keeping up with me so that you can see what other fun styles and hacks that I come up with this pattern. Again, thanks so much for following along with this journey, using this sew along and purchasing my pattern. Happy sewing, friends!